At the time, my sister, uh, my own sister was dying. Uh, she had breast cancer. And I had talked in my lectures on A Course in Miracles about how we should be doing something for people who are facing life-challenging illness. Hundreds and hundreds of young men would come to hear her speak. AIDS was definitely erupting. I mean, it was all around us. And all these young men, we didn't know what the story was because there was no test for AIDS, but most of them were infected. The question is, what can you do today to create a context of people feeling empowered, people feeling loved, people feeling cared for. I had this dream of renting a house, and I thought in terms of non-medical support services. Originally, Marianne had started the LA Center for Living. We had so many people who were therapists and healers and masseuses, and I thought, you know, there are so many people here who would be willing to help. It became apparent that some people could not come to the drop-in center anymore because they had lost their mobility. And that's when I started, I think, talking to David Kessler and saying, you know, we need a program to take these meals to people who are homebound now. Marianne had an amazing vision, and she knew how to help. She knew that it was really putting hopes into action. It was a small little church, but the atmosphere was so incredible because we made those meals, and we delivered those meals, and we delivered it with joy. That was a hoot, what, how we managed all that. I ran this whole thing on little yellow stickies and we knew the stove didn't work so we had to get that to work and we had to get a refrigerator. It was not a great place to begin with but everybody volunteers scurried around you know and got that place whipped up so that we could really we could do a good job. It was an unbelievable feeling of doing something and giving back. Hello, I'm Judith Light. I can't think of anything more rewarding than helping someone in need. Yes, it is I, Bette Midler. But this is no ordinary kitchen. No, 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 no. This is Project Angel Food. Then uh, Elizabeth Taylor became supportive. Major stars, Tony Perkins was there from the very beginning. I gave birth to my daughter the morning after uh, the first divine design. And I remember Tony saying, you can't have the baby yet. You can't have the baby yet. And then when it was over, he's saying, okay, you can have the baby. Divine Design had been so successful. The evening was over, everything was closing down. We had raised over a million dollars. They had a, a lot of income that they needed to sort out. They needed help with their books. I mean, it was really a fledgling organization. We had all the money there and the checks and the charges. And Ed said to me, when's the armored car coming? <laughs> we, we don't have a Brinks truck. And it was like, what are we gonna do with this million dollars? We gotta keep it safe. We had this joke that if we had been remotely attracted to one another, we would have been in Mexico when there'd be no Project Angel Food. But luckily, we had integrity and uh, the money got to the bank account the next morning. The power of Project Angel Food, and this is as true 25 years later as it was at that time, is the love that was infused into the DNA. We want to always remember how many people are not here to tell the story, but they really laid the bricks. They put together the bricks and the mortar, and in many cases did so knowing they were dying, and putting on the tuxedos. And um... The way we responded to the AIDS crisis at the time was a group of us got together and decided to um, not be victims and to help ourselves and our brothers. And it's appropriate that we're marking the 25th anniversary of the founding of Project Angel Food. But also we are celebrating a success within a chapter that is now closed. And as the AIDS epidemic has come under control, Project Angel Food has reached back into its history and into its heart and rediscovered the purpose that it was originally founded. I wish I could say we lived in a world where people aren't going to continue to get sick, but they do. All we had was love. Everything that is a meaningless and ultimately meaningless preoccupation drops and it becomes so clear what's really important. And what we had was our love for each other and we had that in abundance. The spirit of this place, even though it's so modern and so huge, that little seed that was planted in the very beginning, that spark, I swear, 
it's still here, which is so important because, come on, you know, it's, it's love. It's what it is.